Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Waterloo, Iowa, Cadillac XBC Lanes, uh, where we are live streaming right now the 2023 Peacock Classic. It's the second Peacock Classic that uh, Upper Iowa University has hosted, and uh, you're looking at our live stream pair. 23 and 24 at Cadillac XBC Lanes, our host center for the second year in a row, a fantastic facility that uh, has always been great to work with for me and certainly for the teams here, we appreciate their support. Right now the teams are practicing. They are uh, practicing kind of across the house and they will then practice again on their starting pair for a couple minutes and then we will get going with our five team baker matches that's how we'll start out our first day of competition this is the first of three days here in waterloo iowa So the ladies are moving to their competition pair right now, and we will take that opportunity to kind of set the scene for everybody, and uh, thank you for, uh, for joining us uh, for the event. My name is Andrew Pfeffer. I run this YouTube channel that you're watching called Bowling with the Pfeff. It's a, it's a great uh, day for bowling, certainly, and happy to have you join us either live or on replay, however you choose to take this in. Um, it was certainly an exciting event last year, and uh, all thanks, uh, really, to Upper Iowa University head coach Nicole DePaul for bringing me back uh, for doing this. It's a thrill for me, and uh, certainly great to see history last year and uh, see it come back again, uh, true to form, once again. Let's talk about some of the participants that you're going to see in action through this three-day event. Uh, you can see the list right there. Valparaiso from Valparaiso, Indiana, the defending champion. They won this event, the inaugural event in 2022. Newman of Wichita, Kansas, also with us. Lewis University from Romeoville, Illinois. Upper Iowa, of course, the host program from Fayette, Iowa. Uh, they have hosted this event twice now. Unfortunately, weren't able to compete last year, but uh, the ladies are here and they are ready to go for this second Peacock Classic. Augustana of Rock Island, Illinois with us today. Carroll University from Waukesha, Wisconsin. Illinois Wesleyan from Bloomington, Illinois. Elmhurst from Elmhurst, Illinois. And Quincy from Quincy, Illinois rounds out our field here. And as we kind of proceed through the event, we'll learn some of the names and faces that go with those programs and of course see them compete, learn a little bit about them, hopefully hear from some of the coaches, maybe some of the players as uh, we proceed through this three-day event. The pattern is uh, slightly different than last year, just a, a bit shorter, but uh, not incredibly different. This is what the, the ladies will be attacking this morning. You can see it right there, a, a special pattern specific for this event. And I should also mention that a lot of the teams um, have their own live streams going. So if you're a fan of one particular team, and you're looking to see them on pairs that are not our live stream pair as they go through the house, I would recommend uh, checking out their Facebook pages, other social media sites, so you can follow your favorite team as they make their way through the center. Right now, the teams are taking part in five minutes of practice on their, their uh, starting pair. And you can see on our 
live stream pair here. We've got Augustana of Rock Island, Illinois on lane 23. And Quincy of Quincy, Illinois on lane 24. Both of these teams competed in the inaugural event last year, and we're happy to have them both back for the 2023 Peacock Classic. Big shout out, too, to our sponsors, Brunswick, Cedar Valley Sports Commission, and, of course, Upper Iowa University. Without their support, we certainly couldn't do this event the way we do. Also, for those of you tuning in live, we do have a live chat. Uh, you'll see it on your screen there. If you are a fan of one particular program, one particular player, shout them out. Let us know who you're cheering for. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you are watching on replay, feel free to leave a comment. We'd love to hear your feedback about the stream and this event. Today's five-team Baker matches will be, uh, as it sounds, five games of Baker competition. Glad to see Sarah Pace here checking us out live. Proud mom of Samantha Novak from Augustana. Go Vikings. And Samantha and her teammates are warming up right now. You'll see them in action in this first of five Baker matches on our first day of competition here. Off in the distance, you can kind of see some of the pinfall on 19 and 20. That's where our host program, Upper Iowa University, is practicing right now. Off to the right on 27 and 28 is Carol of Waukesha, Wisconsin, and Lewis of Romeoville, Illinois. Ben from 10 Pin Life, that back at the Peacock, you got it. Really, really happy to, uh, to be here. I know I said that once before, but I want to accentuate that point because it's an incredible event. Um, Coach DePaul runs this thing so well. The scores come up quick. It's a great center. And uh, he says, the best voice in bowling. Hire Fef Fox. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, man. Coming from you, that means a lot, because I think you've you've got the best voice in bowling. Certainly one of the loudest. And uh, if you haven't checked out 10 Pin Life, man, you're missing out. So give his channel a look, subscribe, it's right on YouTube. He just came out with some new content this week. And if you haven't seen his videos before, Check them out. It is bowling with the FEF approved, for sure. So as I said, our live stream pair, 23 and 24. And we're starting out with Augustana College and Quincy University. According to the schedule I was handed, match two will be Illinois Wesleyan. and Upper Iowa. So we will get to see the post-school 
taking part for the first time at the 2023 Peacock Classic in game two here. If you had a chance to watch last year, you'll remember that Valparaiso and Marion of Wisconsin went at it in the championship match, a, a seven game, best of seven game Baker match that went all seven games. And Valparaiso caught some momentum at the end and took the title. They are here today, back to defend their crown, and we'll see them as we uh, get a little later into the competition here. But Marion is not here this year, so at least one of the teams in our championship on Championship Sunday will be a, uh, a first-timer, you could say. As we uh, go through the competition here, and, and again, this is a, a three-day event, so we'll be streaming live all three days. And if you're interested in catching back up with us tomorrow or Sunday, uh, the links are really easy to remember. At least I think so. It's uh, bit.ly slash 2023 peacock and then the day of the week. Uh, keep in mind, Peacock is capitalized, and so is the day of the week. Um, those links are case sensitive, so remember, they will not work if you don't capitalize the right letters, so be sure and do that, but that'll take you direct to our stream. Or you can just go to the Bowling with the Feff channel, and you'll see the link up top. Ladies have another two minutes of practice before we get underway with our competition here. I know you've got at least one of the teams uh, live streaming here on, uh, on the pair. So again, if, uh, if you're watching Quincy, if you're a fan of uh, that particular program, or Augustana, and you want to follow along with them as they make their way through the tournament, those games that they're not on our tournament pair, or our live stream pair, I should say, uh, look them up on social media. There's a pretty good chance that they'll be streaming live as they go, looking up and down the house. I would venture to guess that at least six of these teams are are live streaming and uh, following their team up and down the house. So there's plenty of opportunity to supplement the coverage here with uh, with team specific live streams. But whatever the case, happy you joined us here today. And feel free to share the links to the page. Uh, the more, the merrier. And uh, let your friends and family know. I'm sure these ladies appreciate it, as do I.
as tournament director Nicole DePaul gets everybody ready to start action today. It's important to note that uh, although uh, Nicole is the head coach at Upper Iowa, uh, Steve Landry will be handling the coaching duties for Upper Iowa as Nicole runs this great event. You can just see on the bottom right of the screen uh, the ladies from Augustana, head coach Martin Resner, giving them some last instructions, perhaps a little, a little pep talk. Quincy is doing the same. They're just off screen right now. And we are underway here. With the first of our five team Baker matches. Augustana starting out with Sarah Stevanovic from Coal Valley, Illinois. And Quincy countering with Alyssa Vasquez, a sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. Starts out with a spare to open things up. Jessica Ladd, the second Quincy bowler, up right now with a seven count to start things out. As Stevanovic makes quick work of that 6'10". And a cover for Ladd. Klinger burying that strike to give Augustana an early lead. And Delaney Walsh following suit. So an early double. for 
Augustana as uh, we start off play here in game one. Samantha Novak crosses over, but gets the good carry and keeps the, the strike string alive. As Tegan McAuliffe of Oxford, Michigan comes up a little light, leaves the 2-4-5. Maddie Lathrop in the anchor spot for Augustana. Up high, snow plows them down, and they've run four in a row now. McAuliffe's second shot just was a little too far down lane, and uh, but it looks like uh, was able to cover that up. I was kind of obscured there by <laughs> some of the uh, competitors right in front of me. Stevanovic gets that seven to fall. Oh, and uh, Carolina Alvarado going right through the beak and we'll have a 4-6-10 waiting for her. And another strike from Rose Klinger of Elmhurst, Illinois. And just like that, it's six in a row for Augustana. And a nice run for the Vikings has uh, come to an end as Delaney Walsh of Davenport, Iowa will go after a six pin lead. Coach Resner tells us that Delaney is the team leader in split conversions and had no trouble with that, with that six pin there. So be interesting as we proceed through the event uh, split comes up what the strategy will be do you take the count do you go for it in a situation like that and Vasquez misses the 6-10 and Quincy's in a deep hole back to back opens as Samantha Novak just keeps pouring it on for Augustana 209 through 8 with a strike up in the ninth. They'll have a possible 269 if Maddie Lathrop can go off the sheet here. If uh, some of these names sound familiar to you, if uh, you were watching last year's event, that's because many of them did bowl both last year and this year, including Maddie Lathrop, who hits the first strike in the 10th there on lane 24. She was the fourth place finisher at last year's event. And I believe our all tournament MVP, uh, Caitlin Cavender, Averaged an even 200 uh, to take the title last year. And uh, K 
Cavender is not here at this year's event. Uh, she's moved on from Valparaiso. As Lathrop pushes it a little past the break point. Leaves a 2.45. They're still going to be in the 250s. And a great effort starting out for Augustana of Illinois. There's a spare conversion for Kendall Stark, Lebanon, Illinois. As Quincy trying to rally to get what they can out of this first game. 254 for Augustana. Great start to the tournament. Baker matches like this definitely takes a, a, a different mindset. Momentum's important, stacking successes. But when everybody's on, those big scores can add up quick, and Augustana well on their way so far. There's a flush strike for Carolina Alvarado. She is a junior from Metepec, Mexico. I believe she was at last year's event as well with the Quincy team. He splashes out the 10 pin on a half pocket hit to double up in the 10th. Good count. They'll be in the 150s. As soon as we have updates on scores, we'll bring those to you. Although uh, today's competition is comprised of five team Baker matches, and then tomorrow they'll bowl in traditional games, total pinfall between the two days is what's going to set the bracket for Championship Sunday as these teams go head-to-head -to, -head to try and determine a champion. Are, have switched lanes for game two. And Augustana picks up right where they left off with a strike from Sarah Sivanovic. Light for Rose Klinger. She'll go after a two pin here. that up pretty easily as we get set to see uh, Quincy and Alyssa Vasquez start off their second game. 
I'm sorry, that's not Alyssa Vasquez. A little change in the lineup there. No, no, that is. <laughs> that is Alyssa. Crosses over. Leaves a nine pin. And Delaney Walsh goes off to the right, picks three off the right. She'll uh, try and take down that spare. I'm not sure if he's watching or not, but uh, if he is, John Megna, one of the uh, past guests on my show, uh, Bowling with the Feff, wanted me to mention the passing of Marty Olivo. Uh, Marty was the inventor of the striker wristband. He was 85 years old and passed away recently. Uh, John said he mentored him his whole career and calls him a great guy. Um, so certainly thinking about Marty's family and his memory and Milwaukee's bowling community and uh, certainly best to his family during what's got to be a very tough time. But uh, Marty Olivo. Uh, recently passed away at 85. All right, Samantha Novak hits a strike on uh, lane 23. They're coming off and open, so definitely trying to double up here with Maddie Lathrop. She goes left. Leaves a 1 3 6. Kendall Stark hits a strike in the third for Quincy. As they go up about 17 or so. Remember, these are five game matches, so. You know, starting off great is always great, but uh, got to keep that momentum through multiple ma Baker games to uh, to win the match. As Lathrop covers up the spare, 60 through four with a spare up in the fifth. And Tegan McAuliffe is a 10 pin on 24. Sarah Stevanovic, and she'll uh, try and take down the four as McAuliffe covers the spare. And a spare for Stevanovic. Augustana with a big 254 that first game. They're trying to keep that momentum alive in their second game of this first match with Quincy University. And a strike for Carolina Alvarado on the right. Again, a big thank you to all of you who are watching us live and watching some great NCAA competition here in Waterloo, Iowa, Cadillac XBC in the 2023 Peacock Classic, our second event. And a nice cover of the 3-9 by Rose Klinger.
strike from Delaney Walsh of Davenport, Iowa. And the Vikings still have a, a possible 207 up there. They can string some strikes here. Split for Samantha Novak in the Augustana ninth. And takes care of it. Washout conversion there from Jessica Ladd on the Quincy side. Maddie Lathrop going to finish things up for Augustana. They've still got 187 up there. She can run three strikes here in the 10th. Takes down the first one on a high flush pocket hit. Kindle Stark answers. But we'll need to uh, go after a seven pin leave here. The lefty, a freshman from Lebanon, Illinois. Takes that down. Quincy can run run the sheet here for 194 as we watch Lathrop try and double up. And takes down the 10. So again, with count, they'll be in the 180s. Ooh. Tegan McAuliffe up high in the pocket in the 7 10 stands. Miss Quincy will have 140 through 9 with a possible 170 if Alvarado can come up with three strikes here. The Lathrop on the light hit takes down the 8 and finishes with 187 for Augustana. And they'll have a solid 2 nothing lead in this first five-team Baker match. doubles up. Again, she can hit the third one. They'll end up with 170.
crosses over, but takes down all 10. And with uh, three strikes in the 10 for each team, Quincy ends up with 170, and it's 187 for Augustana, who takes the first two games of this first match. Chris Pulliam, good morning to the FEF. Good morning to you too, sir. Thank you so much for joining us on this live stream of the 2023 Peacock Classic. Glad to have you here. Like I said earlier, the live chat is open if you want to shout out a player or one of the teams that you're cheering for today. Feel free. Let them know. I'm sure these ladies would appreciate the support. Quick strike to start things off for Alyssa Vasquez. As Quincy trying to climb out of a 2-0 deficit here in this opening match. Sarah Stevanovic going, going left. He's got a 1-3-6. Pretty similar on the, on the left there from Jessica Ladd as she leaves the 1-2. quick work of that spare. And Lad slides by that head pin, leaving them 28 through two. And there's a strike from Rose Klinger from Elmhurst, Illinois. So Quincy, one of those teams that uh, participated in the inaugural event. Glad to see them back here. They finished 31st out of 34 teams early this season in the Midwest Collegiate Championships in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. As Kendall Stark goes light, leaves a 3-6-7. Fourteenth at the Tier One National Collegiate Team Match Tournament, and forty-third at the Kegel ISBPA Midwest Collegiate Event. In Tier Two events this year, they finished tenth at the Bearcat Roto Grip Open, eighth at the Five Seasons Classic, and twenty-third at the Leatherneck Classic. So like many of the teams in our field, certainly battle-tested in the first half of this 2022-2023 season. Tegan McAuliffe, the sophomore, goes a little, little right, leaves a 1-2. Samantha Novak up high, leaving a, a 4-7. Shane cheering them on. Great start, Lady Vikings. Let's keep it going. And a spare for McAuliffe. Glad to see the Augustana contingent has got some, uh, some folks watching live here. I'm sure they appreciate the support as... Novak takes down that spare. So they'll have 48 through three with a spare up in the fourth. Quincy hits a strike in the fifth. 
56 through four for them with that strike up. If you're familiar with the Baker system, then you know that each team has five ladies that take part and uh, really combine forces into the same game on the same lane. So you'll have a player bowling the first and sixth frames, another bowling the second and seventh, a third bowling the third and eighth, fourth bowling the fourth and ninth, and the anchor player uh, bowling in the fifth and tenth. for Vasquez, leaving them 80 through six. And an open on the Augustana side as well, as they put up 76 through the first five frames. Up high in an eight count for Jessica Ladd, the sophomore from Tari, Louisiana. Materi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The unwritten rule in, in TV is say it quickly and confidently. <laughs> I'm pretty confident that I butchered it. As she takes one off the left. Quincy has 89 through 7. As Sarah Stevanovic covers the 5 pin there. Augustana with 76 through 5 and a spare in the 6th. High and a 10 pin lead for Kendall Stark as Rose Klinger is a 10 pin as well. And it's always great to see these teams competing, but I think the biggest thing for me is that uh, I'm just glad everybody got here okay. Weather's been kind of dicey in uh, both Iowa and across the Midwest for the last couple days. Up in uh, western Wisconsin, where I'm from, we ended up uh, getting blanketed in about a half a foot of snow just yesterday, so... Glad everybody is uh, is here and ready to compete. Solid 10 for McAuliffe on the left. And spare and uh, three strikes in the 10th. They'll have 158. Meanwhile, it's a strike for Delaney Walsh of Davenport, Iowa on lane 24. As Augustana can run four more strikes for 194. Six, seven, ten for Samantha Novak. As Alvarado leaves a 
seventh in. So what do you do here, right? Take the count, try and pick it up. Coach Resner uh, gives her some last minute advice. I always think when you're you're coming off a strike here, I mean, one pin is two. But she just picks it up. <laughs> you know, just like that. You know, when you pick it up, four pins is eight, so. <laughs> that works, too. As Alvarado covers that seven pin. And with count, she'll be in the 140s. Maddie Lathrop from Sycamore, Illinois, stepping up in the 10th. And decent count, and uh, they'll take their third consecutive game here. A strike for Alvarado. They end up with 147. And Lathrop up and off. Augustana's on a 164 pace. And gets a great break on a high hit. Trips out that nine pin. And that'll be another win for Augustana. Three single pin misses in that game, but highlighted by that big split conversion by Samantha Novak to keep them on top. And up high, leaving a 3610. You can take that down for 164. You, you may or may not be able to tell from uh, the picture we have up. The competition pairs are pretty well spread out uh, throughout this 36-lane facility. You can see the machines going on uh, 19 and 20, which is a uh, practice pair that Upper Iowa is utilizing right now. Just a few scattered spectators here this morning, as was the case last year on Friday. It can be tough to get here to, uh, to cheer on your teams, but hopefully with the help of this live stream, those of you who couldn't make the trip out have a chance to do it virtually. Certainly a, a bigger crowd here on, uh, on Saturday last year, and I'd expect the same this time around, assuming everything stays dry as uh, I believe is forecasted. I hope is forecasted. <laughs> I think we've had enough snow for a little bit. Of course, I'd be singing a different tune if, uh, if snowmobiling was in my plans this weekend. All right, Sarah Stavanovic. Half pocket hit, snaps out that 10, and uh, another hot start for Augustana. Alyssa Bosca is up high, leaves a 6-10. She'll go after that. And Klinger puts it off to the left, leaves a 1-3-5. Another thing about this Baker format is unlike traditional games, and I'm sure those of you who have been watching 
for any length of time thus far can see is that the whole game is on one lane. So maybe in the early part of a game you get a get a look, get some information on uh, on how the ball's reacting, how it's going through the pins, and then can uh, either repeat or make an adjustment later in the game. As opposed to the traditional games that we'll be in tomorrow where the players will alternate on one pair in each match and then uh, skip pairs as they will today. So a quick 12-pin lead from Augustana thus far in this fourth game. As Delaney Walsh takes care of a 10-pin, they've got 28 through the first two with a spare up in the third. And there's a strike there for... Kendall Stark. for Samantha Novak and is left with a Takes the count there. Augustana in their lone Tier 1 event this season uh, finished 47th at the Kegel ISBPA Midwest Collegiate, but uh, has taken part in a bunch of Tier 2 events, including the Warhawk Classic, where they finished 4th out of 8 teams. Uh, the Five Seasons Classic, where they finished 11th. The Leatherneck, where they finished 28th. The CCIW Event 1, uh, where they finished 5th, and the Warhawk Open, the Brunswick Warhawk Open, where they finished 17th. There's a nice strike for Maddie Lathrop as they put up 54 through the first four frames with a strike in the 5th. Alvarado snaps out the 7 to answer. Again, winning the match is important, as uh, Augustana has done here uh, on our live stream pair. But total pins are the main factor into which of these teams is going to uh, get higher seedings in our Sunday bracket and uh, which teams will be uh, lower. Barbara watching live, telling Samantha to keep up the good work.
Samantha's got some fans here this morning. Good to see. And there's a strike for Rose Klinger. Ladies will be bowling straight through the rest of the morning into the early afternoon. The event typically uh, goes until about, I believe, 3.30 this afternoon. So lots of bowling left today for sure and, uh, and two more days after this. And there's a strike for Kyra Humbert from Belleville, Illinois. And a spare for Walsh. So Augustana with 102 through seven and a spare up in the eighth. There's a double uh, from Kindle Stark on the Quincy side. So a little, little momentum here from Quincy. Three strikes in the last four frames. Novak crushes the pocket for a ninth frame strike for Augustana. And there's another one on the on the Quincy side for Tegan McAuliffe. So 204 up there, up there if Carolina Alvarado can Carolina Alvarado can come up with three strikes in the tenth here. On the Augustana side, they still have 182 up there if uh, Maddie Lathrop can go off the sheet. Alvarado didn't like the look of that off her hand, and it did cross over, but uh, tripped out that four pin, and, and they've got four in a row now. Up high leaves a 310 baby split. RTA Dave, 67, congratulating Samantha on a, on a nice job and says, go Vikings. And they are off to a great start so far, winning the first three games of this match. And there's another split conversion. So, strike and the fill ball would give them 162. Meanwhile, on the Quincy side, Alvarado trying to finish out with a 193. And a little bit right of the seven pin, so they'll settle for 192. Good morning to all of you who are taking in some of the 2023 Peacock Classic with us this morning. We are live at Cadillac XBC in Waterloo, Iowa, which was the site of the inaugural event last year as well as uh, this year's second Peacock Classic. Upper Iowa University, our host school for the second year and uh, competing in our field for the first time, and we'll see them 
a little bit later along with schools like Illinois Wesleyan and Lewis, Elmhurst, Valparaiso in our field today, Newman, and Carroll as we make our way through these five-team Baker matches. Again, those of you who are watching live, feel free to use that live chat. Shout out your favorite players, your favorite teams. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you're watching on replay, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Be part of the conversation. It's a great thing about live streaming. It's all interactive. So it's not just me sitting here yapping at you guys. You've got, uh, you've got a voice in this too. A six-pin leave there for Alyssa Vasquez in game five of this first match. A little bit light for Sarah Stavanovic, leaves a two pin. And there's a spare for Vasquez on the Quincy side. Kyra Humbert, a senior from Belleville, Illinois, the lone senior on the women's roster on the, the Quincy side. And Rose Klinger follows up that spare in the first with a strike in the seventh, in the second, as Augustana takes an early lead in this fifth game. says she's Samantha's grandmother watching from Lansing, Michigan and go Vikings. It's important to have that family support, you know? Oh. Tough break there for Delaney Walsh as she'll have a 6-7 to contend with here. Kendall Stark hits a strike on the Quincy side in their third frame. 38 through two with a strike in the third. For Quincy. Tegan McAuliffe up high, leaving a 6'10". She'll go after that. And a nine count for Walsh, leaving them with 48 through three. So Quincy up by about 10 early. Augustana has taken three out of the first four of these games. And the call of slides by the six there. So they'll have 66 through the first four frames here in game five. Here's Samantha Novak. A 
collapses the 6-10 to come away with a strike there in the Augustana fourth. And Carolina Alvarado is a half pocket seven pin on the Quincy side. One thing about these college teams, they're very, very passionate about cheering on whoever's up. Everybody on the roster is standing. It's pretty rare to see anybody in a, in a team jersey sitting down. And, and they cheer loudly, as you can hear and, and will hear through the course of this event. So Alvarado picks up the spare. They've got 66 through four with a spare up in the fifth. And Maddie Lathrop getting some uh, coaching from head coach Martin Resner. She talks strategy before going after this two, four, five, eight. Maddie has the school record at Augustana for the most clean games in a season and uh, is the leader in most statistical categories there. So certainly no surprise that Coach Resner is leaning on her in that all-important anchor role. Takes three off of that relatively tough spare. So 76 through five for Augustana. And Quincy with a little lead here as Alyssa Bosquez takes down the five pin and celebrates. Sarah Stavanovic leaving a 10 pin. This is Kyra Humbert, the lone senior, leaving a half pocket 10 on the Quincy side. They've got 104 through six. She goes after the spare. Meanwhile, Stavanovic hooks it by the 10 pin, leaving them with 85 through six. Great to have the you know the the strikes and string them. Don't get me wrong, it you know they add up quickly, but boy, it it's awfully tough to score, especially in the Baker system when you miss spares. Kendall Stark hitting that strike on lane 23 as Rose Klinger. Pushes it past the six pin there. So again, even though Augustana took those first few uh, games here, it's total pins that, uh, that factors heavily into who's getting which position in Sunday's bracket for the championship. Hey. 
Okay. Crosses over, leads the seven pin. That's Delaney Walsh from Davenport, Iowa. And a spare for Tegan McAuliffe on the left. Quincy with 133 through eight. Spare up in the ninth for Carolina Alvarado. And a possible 183. As Walsh just, just snaps out the, the seven there. A light pocket strike for Alvarado. She doubles up and they'll take this final game of the first match. Some of the other competitors off to the left, I believe, have finished already, so they're going a little, little more quickly than we are here, but looks like they'll be waiting once they're done because uh, the Carol Lewis match is uh, still in the early stages of game five. A seven count for Samantha Novak. She'll go after the one three six there. As Alvarado hits a double in the tenth. Good count will put him in the one eighties. As Augustana trying to finish strong here. I'll need all three in the tenth uh, to finish up with a 150 in game five here. And Alvarado goes off the sheet for 183. <laughs> so they've got something to cheer about. a light pocket strike from Maddie Lathrop. Quincy's coach imploring his ladies to make our shots as uh, they move on to the second match here. Lathrop pushes it past to the right of the head pin, leaves herself with a one, two, eight. They'll end up with 140 with a spare here. And then move on to their next match. And gets all three. So 183 to 140 gives Quincy the fifth game. Although it's Augustana taking it three games to two on the momentum caused by that fantastic 254 in game one. Again, if you're uh, following these teams, uh, Quincy or Augustana in particular, um, it looks as though both are, uh, are streaming to one of their social platforms. So be sure and check them out there as uh, we will most likely have two different teams as uh, we move on to the second match here in just a moment.
Again, a big thank you to everyone who's joining us, uh, both live and on replay, for day one of the 2023 Peacock Classic. Right now, we're just waiting uh, for the conclusion of the match between Lewis and Carroll. You can kind of see the, the pinfall off to the right. That's where they're finishing up there. And really, we just uh, are waiting on Carol to finish up their 10th frame as Lewis already uh, has uh, shot 197 in their final game, which is going to be uh, higher than, uh, than Carol ends up with in this game. They need to punch out for 146. And once we end up with scores uh, for those first matches, we'll bring them to you. Here are some of the other participants you'll see throughout the day. Defending champion Valparaiso is back and looking to make it two years in a row here at the NCAA Peacock Classic. Along with plenty of others. Sitting here uh, taking a look at it makes me realize that I misspelled the word classic in that graphic. <laughs> so let's see if we can try again here. So three minutes for these teams to end up on the pair that they'll be on in uh, match two. There we go. That's better. <laughs> so Valparaiso, our uh, defending champion. Uh, also Newman, Lewis, Upper Iowa, Augustana, as you saw in the first match with Quincy there. Carroll, Illinois Wesleyan, and Elmhurst. Thanks again uh, for joining us today for uh, the first day of competition here at Cadillac XBC in Waterloo, Iowa. <laughs> <You're all right. laughs> Just about to start off match two here, where you'll see Illinois Wesleyan in the green. And we'll get our first look at the host school, Upper Iowa University. <laughs> Upper
Jennifer, Iowa, from nearby Fayette, Iowa. Again, hosted this event in 2022, but was not able to field a team. So we'll get our first look at them in competition right here. You may not have seen them, but uh, you probably heard them <laughs> as, as uh, they were in, encouraging their, uh, their team members to uh, strike and spare and all that good stuff. Off to our left where, uh, where we sit here. tournament official just uh, handed out some scores that I'm uh, trying to pull up on the screen here. Upper Iowa, the early leader with uh, 1079 in the first match and uh, a one nothing result there. in favor of the Peacocks. Newman in second with See if we can get these these scores up here. Oh. Let's let's go with that so we can see some of the action. So yeah, Upper Iowa. Uh, 1079 in uh, in the first Baker match gets the win there. Uh, Newman 992. Lewis University in third at 920. Augustana, who you just saw here at 903. Quincy University at 843 in fifth place, uh, followed by Elmhurst at, with uh, 783. Valparaiso at 768. Carroll with 763 and Illinois Wesleyan rounding out the field with 608 in that first Baker match. So it's Upper Iowa and Illinois Wesleyan uh, doing battle in match two. Unfortunately, I haven't uh, 
haven't received the, the names to go along with the faces, but I'm sure I will pretty soon. <laughs> As uh, Upper Iowa taking an early lead with uh, 20 in the first, strike up, and now a 1-3-5-6. Uh, Okay. God, I to we're, we're working on the names here. So in the upper Iowa fourth, it looks like we've got Michaela Morgan on 24. She hits a strike there in the fourth. Again, Upper Iowa, the tournament leader so far after that first match. Kittle in the fifth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing because uh, Nicole DePaul is uh, frantically trying to get me <laughs> names and uh, and positions here. So this is Aubrey Kittle from uh, Illinois up in the in the upper Iowa fifth frame. And she takes down the 2 5. So, Upper Iowa with uh, an early lead amounting to about, uh, about 46 pins uh, through the first four. Dana Murata from Hawaii taking down the spare in the sixth. Upper Iowa has 99 through the first five with that spare up. A clean game so far. Illinois Wesleyan still looking for their first mark this game. And it's not going to come easy. Strike on the Upper Iowa side from Sammy Percha. Wagner crossing over, leaves a six pin.
recovers that spare. Kayla Morgan crossing over and taking down the four or the six. Gives them 159 through eight, a strike up in the ninth. They've still got 219 up there if they can get three strikes in the tenth from Aubrey Kittle of Illinois. Morgan with that two-handed style, not the only one in the field, uh, not the only two-hander in the field, but uh, up high for a four-six-seven. and they'll finish up with 187. So Wesleyan with a strike here in the fill ball will end up with 108. And an eight count will give them 106. So it's Upper Iowa University um, taking that first game by a pretty hefty margin. As the ladies will switch lanes and get ready to start game two. So again, if you're just joining us, here's uh, how the standings look after that first Baker match. We're now a game into the second match here with Dana Murata starting off game two with a strike for the Peacocks. And 
make it a double as Sammy Paracha buries the pocket and celebrates with her teammates. Amber Wagner up high leaves a 410. Gets out the four, almost takes them both. So they'll have 56 through three and uh, look to Michaela Morgan to get back on board the strike train here. Morgan, the second two-hander that we've uh, seen on our live stream pair today, going up light, leaving a Her spare ball as uh, she goes to work. Over on the Wesleyan side, that's Haley Rootberg from Vernon Hills, Illinois. Taking one out there, leaving them with. 23 through 3. And Morgan pushes it a little right. And they'll have 65 through 4. Here's another two hander, Chloe Gutierrez. Wesley inside, and she'll have a six pin to look at here. And a strike from Aubrey Kittle, the anchor player from Upper Iowa, from Illinois. Gutierrez. Three freshmen on the Wesleyan roster this year. So some names and faces that uh, we're seeing for the first time. As 
Dana Murata gets another strike. Upper Iowa, our tournament leaders right now, 65 through four with a double up. And Sammy Percha heading up to take care of business in the seventh. Shea Atkins marking for the first time this game on the Illinois Wesleyan side. She's a senior from Chicago and was here at our tournament last year. a spare for Sammy. And, uh, spare for Kira Henderson. Another freshman on the Wesleyan side. They've got 52 through five with a spare up. And a half pocket 10 for Amber Wagner. Two seniors on this Illinois Wesleyan squad from Broodwell, Illinois. with a 6-10. They've got a, a ball return full of spare balls on 25 and 26 there. It's just a pair that isn't being used. So one Upper Iowa player will be up to bowl and one of her teammates will take the spare balls to and from that other ball return to keep things free for uh, everybody else. And takes care of that spare. So 149 for Upper Iowa through the eighth frame with a spare up in the ninth. Aubrey Kittle can strike out to make it 199. Wesleyan can go spare strike for 160. Pushes it a little to the right, leaves a 2 4 5 8 bucket. to have that extra space where 
you've got the, the room to put spare balls and other other items on that pair that isn't being used. Like I said, the competition pairs are kind of spread out here. As Chloe Gutierrez covers the spare. That came back a long ways, and she knew it. But it's a spare to start out the upper Iowa 10th frame from Aubrey Kittle. Lambs a strike to finish out the game. 185 for Upper Iowa. Wesleyan will look to Shea Atkins to pick up the spare and strike on the fill ball for 141. Atkins is uh, working on the thumb hole of her bowling ball right now. So Upper Iowa, our post-program here, as uh, we've said many times so far, a relatively newer program, too. They've only been competing for a few years here. But they've definitely got the, the home crowd support as bunch of the folks here at Cadillac XBC have been cheering for them, keeping the spirits high, and it's paid off so far as they're our tournament leader entering this second Baker match. hole is good and she picks up that spare. will end up with 131 in that game and it's 2-0 Upper Iowa in this second match. We certainly hope you're enjoying the competition so far. Again, this is a three-day event so be sure and come back and check out the competition on Saturday and Sunday. We've got uh, a separate link for each day of competition, Saturday, bit.ly slash 2023 Peacock Saturday. And those links are case sensitive, so be sure and capitalize the P in Peacock and S in Saturday to make that work. And then Championship Sunday, a uh, similar link, bit.ly slash 2023 Peacock Sunday. And you'll see all the live action as we uh, crown a champion here in uh, Waterloo, Iowa. So the ladies return to their original starting positions. 
as we begin game three here with Kira Henderson. And she connects for a strike for Illinois Wesleyan. Murata answers. Sammy Percha trying to keep things light after gutter on the first ball in the second frame. And gets eight out of it. So they'll maintain the six pin lead over Illinois Wesleyan who Sends Haley Rootberg up, the freshman from Vernon Hills, Illinois. Pushes it past the head pin, gets a seven count. both. So 26 through 2 with the spare up in the third. And Chloe Gutierrez crosses over, leaves a 5 pin. Crosses over, takes down the six. And there's a spare for Gutierrez. So 39 through three with a spare in the fourth for Illinois Wesleyan. Aubrey Kittle connects the double up for Upper Iowa. <laughs> Shea Atkins crosses over, takes down the 10, so they've got 59 through four with a strike up. Here's Dana Murata from Hawaii. Oh. 
Lefty comes up high and leaves a 4 7. Kira Henderson with a strike. Sammy Percha up high. Leaves a 6 9 10. and that's an open frame, so they'll have 119 through seven and look to Amber Wagner to pick things up for them again. Oliva Katie pushes it past that spare. They have 98 through seven on the Illinois Wesleyan side. high for a 6-10 there. Wagner is the lone Iowan for Upper, upper Iowa, at least in, uh, in the lineup as it stands right now. As Haley Rootberg strikes for Illinois Wesleyan. Wagner covers the spare. So still plenty of time for both teams to come out on top this game. Chloe Gutierrez leaves a half pocket 10 for the Illinois Wesleyan ninth frame. And Michaela Morgan up through the face, a 4-6-10. takes care of the 10 pin. So Shea Atkins can get up, double up, and get him into the 160s. And that will force Upper Iowa to at least mark. Took a long, hard look at that spare. Got the count though, so they've got 145 through nine. So, still anybody's game right now. Atkins pushes it to the left. 
leaves a 1-3-5. And Aubrey Kittle goes up high, leaving a 3-6. So Kittle makes this and gets good count. Really gets any count. They'll be able to uh, escape this, this third game. Oh, she only got one, so 154 for Upper Iowa, and that gives Atkins a chance. Cover this up and strike in the fill ball. They'll they'll win the game by a pin. Oh, she pushes it to the right, takes two off. So, 144 for Illinois Wesleyan and Upper Iowa will take game three by ten pins. Spares mean a lot. third match today we'll see uh, two other teams that uh, haven't been on the live stream pair just yet uh, defending champion Valparaiso University will take on Newman University taking down that sphere to start off game four of this match for Upper Iowa. And a spare for Kira Henderson for Illinois Wesleyan. So we're all knotted up after a frame. And Sammy Percha crushes the pocket and celebrates with her team. for Amber Wagner. Kayla Morgan makes it three in a row. Slaps out the corners.
hold up a little high for Aubrey Kittle. She'll go after the 3 6 10. makes it three in a row for Illinois Wesleyan. As they try to keep pace with the host and tournament leader, Upper Iowa. Another strike, four in a row for Illinois Wesleyan off the hand of Kira Henderson. pin for Dana Murata. And Olivia Katie picks one off the left to give them 99 through 5. And a cover for Dana Morata. Wesleyan with 123 through 7. Sammy Percha trips the 4 to give Upper Iowa 136 through 6 with a strike up. Almost taken down that nine pin. And Amber Wagner leaving a six. So a spare for Rutberg. Illinois Wesleyan can they can put four strikes together. They'd end up with 203 this game. Peacocks are on a pace to be in the two teens if they can keep the marks up. And Wagner does, does her part. One, two, or one, three, six, eight, ten. And Michaela Morgan goes up a little high, leaves the four. Go 
Gutierrez takes care of it. So with 138 in the eighth, a spare up in the ninth, they still have 188 up there, but at this point, Upper Iowa really just needs to maintain count, stay behind the foul line, and they're going to take game four. Atkins rattles him around, but leaves a 5-7. As Morgan takes care of the spare. So it'll be Upper Iowa winning a fourth game in a row against Illinois Wesleyan. And Atkins gets one out of there to finish with 165. After putting one in the ditch on the first ball, Aubrey Kittle recovers and picks up the spare. So with a strike, they would end up with 205 as they move on to the fifth game of this match. Ten, so they'll end up with 204. But either way, they're going to take the match with Illinois Wesley and going into this last game and hoping to keep piling up those big scores. So the final game of this five-game match between Upper Iowa and Illinois Wesleyan, Dana Murata starting things out with a strike for the Peacocks. And Kira Henderson matches her. After this, we'll have three more Five game Baker matches. As we continue competition on day one of the 2023 Peacock Classic, Oliva Katie making it a double for Illinois Wesleyan. And the 10 
Washington, not a problem for Sammy Percha. If you're following these teams specifically, again, many of them have live streams, their own individual live streams going on. On their social media pages, so. I don't know if Illinois Wesleyan has one. I'm pretty sure I'm looking at the Upper Iowa stream right now in front of me. So you can certainly follow along with them in that way if you'd like to cheer on your team of choice and follow them pair by pair. Two four five for Chloe Gutierrez. That's one way to make the washout. <laughs> Can't say these sidewalls aren't lively. <laughs> As Upper Iowa puts in a different player in place of Morgan. a 10 pin in the fifth. So Chloe Gutierrez misses the 2-4-5. That'll bring their strike string to an end. 81 through 4 for Illinois Wesleyan. The uh, new player for Upper Iowa in the fourth and ninth is Emma Hawley. Dana Murata, in the light pocket hit, leaves a 5 6. Puts it right between them. Yeah. 
It can be tough to be that late leadoff player, especially when you get to a new pair. Lane you haven't seen in a while, but she's definitely performed here and uh, given her team a spark. As Shea Atkins takes two off there and gives them 90 through five. So a slight lead for Upper Iowa who has won the match, but get up, get yeah. trying to keep knocking them down and Sammy Percha gets the left side of the rack to fall. 114 through six with a strike in the seventh. And Henderson strikes for Illinois Wesleyan. Hit will have a two pin to deal with. Both teams still have a shot at 200 in this game. spare for Wagner so that gives them 134 through seven with a spare up in the eighth as they look to Emma Hawley to try and finish strong here in the upper Iowa ninth. Answers, answers the call. Two strikes for her in this final game of the second match. pin leave and go spare strike for 194. Takes care of the 10. So as soon as we receive a score update from the tournament officials, we'll let you know how things stack up after our second Baker match here. for Kittle, makes it 194 for Upper Iowa. So a 
solid five game effort. Gives them the second match. They'll move to 2-0 and on the day and look to maintain that lead in the event. Atkins covers the spare. A strike on the fill ball would give them 170. As we wrap up match two, of our five today, and Atkins does get that strike for 170. So it's Upper Iowa getting their second match win and moving on. We've got a couple teams finishing up off to our left. And once they do and the scores are updated, we will bring those to you and let you know where things stack up in after two matches uh, in the 2023 Peacock Classic.
so you can kind of see oh well, it's it might be a little off screen now on lane 18 that's uh, Lewis University finishing off their match and once they do everybody will have a few minutes to report to their next pair and start competition in match number three. So three minutes, and then we will get started with our next game. Big thank you to all of you who are watching live here today at our coverage of, of the 2023 Peacock Classic live at Cadillac XBC, Waterloo, Iowa. With two matches in the books, we will soon get an update on the standings and the event, let you know if uh, Upper Iowa's performance here on our live stream pair was enough to maintain their tournament lead. They were the leaders after the first match. Three minutes isn't a ton of time, so everybody's hustling. <laughs> first look at the defending champion Valparaiso University team along with Newman University out of Wichita, Kansas. Some names and jersey numbers of our next competitors from Valparaiso and Newman. And getting some updated scores for you here.
All right. So as we get started here, Lilu Smith leaves a 10 pin and we are underway. Trying to get that image of the scores ready for you here. I can tell you that Upper Iowa University has maintained their lead. 2003 is their total at the, at the current time. from Valparaiso. That's a seven count there. takes care of the spare. As does Morgan Cooper from Newman. Jen Pats flags a spare. And as does Kensley Morris.
So now we move into the Valparaiso fifth with Noel Duty, who was one of two that you may recall from last year's event. And she hammers a strike. Get them going in game one of this match. Chris says that I'm doing a good job, <laughs> a great job with the streaming. And, and thank you, thank you, Chris. No, it's uh, it's been a little little rough behind the scenes as Briley Prokish hits a strike on the Newman side. Um, yeah, spent a, a chunk of the last match without some of the names and of the players, but we get through it. You know, you find a way. Uh, Lilu Smith leaves a three pin there on the left for Valparaiso. Lilu, another one uh, who was a part of that championship team from last year's uh, Peacock Classic. Carrie Ann Takuchi. Rattles around the pins there, leaves a seven pin as Smith picks up a spare. So now, let's see if we can share these scores. Hopefully this works out. There we go. Let's try it that way so you can see a little more of, uh, of the action going on as uh, we watch Ali Eibel hit a strike for Valparaiso. Those are the uh, updated scores for the tournament as it stands after the second match. Upper Iowa University maintaining that lead, about 150, not quite 150 pins, uh, with 2,003 after the first two matches. Newman, uh, who is here on our live stream pair right now with uh, 1,857. Um, although they haven't uh, won a match yet, we're talking total pinfall here, so uh, they're standing in the number two spot. Lewis University with 1,828 is your three seed right now. Augustana in fourth at 1,772. Quincy uh, at 17,06 is the five seed. Valparaiso with 1,675 in the sixth spot. Elmhurst with 1594 in 7th, Carroll University with 1504 in 8th, and Illinois Wesleyan in 9th with 1324. And there's a spare for Jen Pats. for Kensley Morris as well. So with a strike on the fill ball, Newman's still got 170 up there. 
Noel Duty, who is up on 23, can strike out for 171. Looks at light and moves the 2 4. So Newman will take game one of this third match. As far as the USBC Collegiate online team ranking system is concerned, uh, Newman, uh, who is ranked 53rd after week 18 of competition, is the highest ranked team in our field. So Newman elects to bring in another player for the fill ball. And that's Allison Seswick. up with 169 and that's going to be 13 better than Valparaiso. So Newman takes game one of this third match. And the ladies will switch lanes and get ready for our second game of competition here. right off the bat for Briley Prokish. And Lilu Smith with a nine count, even that nine pin. So Newman University uh, has a sixth place finish in the tier one mid-states championships from earlier this season. In tier two events, they finished six out of 11 teams at the Bearcat Roto Grip Open, a seventh place finish at the Jayhawk Collegiate Challenge, a third place finish at Valparaiso University Bowling Event, an eighth place finish at the Motive Lady Jack Classic, and a seventh place finish at the Storm in Blue and White Vegas Championship. Uh, two pin for Addison Scheffelbein. Hangs on and covers that spare. <laughs> Allie Idle looking for a little messenger help there, not going to get it, so she'll have a 10 pin up. Morgan Cooper up high, leaving a three, six, and 10.
So 48 through three frames of play in this second game for Valparaiso. Is going to have a little hole to dig themselves out of to keep pace with Newman as Cooper converts the spare. So now it's back to Kensley Morris in uh, the first game. Took on the uh, anchor duties. She leaves a 10 pin. So 94 through 5 for Newman as Noel Duty takes the fifth frame for Valparaiso. Got it a little left and she'll have the four or the five six ten to deal with here to try and keep him within 10 of Newman. one so down by 21 in the fifth getting a little advice from head coach Sean Washington Meanwhile, Briley Prokish gets one on the baby split, leaves them with 103 through six. Carry Ann Takuchi. Mixes them up from the left, so. on the Newman side. shot from Lulu Smith unfortunately doesn't get the reward as she leaves a flush pocket 10 and a 
a 2-5 from Morgan Cooper. Both of these teams, uh, it appears, are streaming live as well. So after this match, if you are a fan of Newman or a fan of Valparaiso, want to follow them pair by pair, uh, check out their social media and you can watch their live streams. a spare for Cooper. So they've got 151 through 8 with a spare up in the ninth. As Morgan Axe answers with a strike in the Valparaiso 7th. A 210 for Kensley Morris. As she talks a little strategy with her team. So Newman puts in another player for spare. Get a feel for the condition. And we'll see uh, what they end up going with for a lineup in this next game. Eibel with an open in the eighth, so that leaves them at 121 through eight. Newman finishes with 178. So Valpo's gonna have some work to do to win game two. Strike in the ninth, so here's the deal. Noel Duty up in the tenth needs a double. And good count to lead them to a win this second game. Anything less, and they'd be down 0-2 in this match. Hold that one to the left and left a 5-8. So it'll be Newman going up two games to none on Valparaiso in this third match of the day. Upper Iowa, who is our tournament leader, off to the right on lanes 27 and 28, just finished off a 226 with the last five. So they're trying to build on that lead that they've had for the first two matches so far. So it'll be 149 for Valparaiso. Newman winning the second game of our third match here. As 
as Valparaiso tries to get fired up and get a better result in these next three games. A big thank you to all of you who are watching live or on replay here with our coverage of day one of the 2023 Peacock Classic. Again, we'll be live all three days as Lilu Smith starts out game three with a seven count. You can watch uh, tomorrow's coverage at bit.ly slash 2023 Peacock Saturday. Sunday's coverage at bit.ly slash 2023 Peacock Sunday. Those links are case sensitive, so make sure you capitalize the P in Peacock and the S in Saturday or Sunday. And you'll be good to go. We're at Cadillac XBC in Waterloo, Iowa, as Lulu Smith takes care of the spare. In the midst of our five team Baker matches. Ten pin for Riley Prokish to start out Newman's first frame. And a split for Morgan Axe. get one out of there so they'll have 25 through two as Prokish takes aim at that 10 pin and covers it easily and there's a strike for Ali Eibel Kuchi follows with a strike in the Newman second. And Jen Pats on a high hit takes down the four and gives Valparaiso a double. And Scheffelbein on a half pocket hit almost gets that 10 to go, but not quite. She'll end up uh, shooting that spare. There's Noel Duty in the Valparaiso fifth. A little bit light, 2 8 10. So two splits in the first five frames for Valparaiso, who Trying to play catch up here as Scheffelbein takes down the 10 pin. <laughs> 40 through two frames and a spare up on the Newman side. We've got Morgan Cooper coming up in the Newman fourth. And two out for Noel Duty. And Valparaiso has 80 through five. 
So they're going to need to string some strikes in a hurry. As Morgan Cooper leaves a two pin. at seven. And Cooper takes down the two. So 59 through three for Newman, a spare up in the fourth and pretty good size lead in game three of this match. Smith flags the seven and they're left with 89 through through six. Is Kensley Morris. Hits a strike in the seventh. As Morris misses on the shot at the eight pin. So they have 87 through five. And still with that open, still maintaining a pretty comfortable lead. So Valparaiso needs some strikes. Prokish hits that high flush pocket strikes. Strike and her teammates love it. There's the answer from Ali Idol. So Valparaiso can still shoot a 209 here if they punch out. Gucci makes it a double for Newman. Who is leading by almost 30 pins. strike for Newman from Allison Shufflebein and they're cruising right now. Jen Pats has got to have this baby split if they want any chance of winning this match. Got them both. So 137 through eight, and a spare up in the ninth. Noel Duty can get up there and punch out for 187, but Morgan Cooper hits a fourth consecutive Newman strike. Kensley Morris and Newman is going to take game three. So 
despite the fact that they came into this match in second place in the tournament, they had yet to win a match in their first two. Um, so this will be Newman's first match win of the event. Yet they are knocking on the door as far as the top seed is concerned. And going into this match, that is held by the host school, Upper Iowa University. Newman's going to finish in the 220s. Morris takes aim at the 245. It's 177 for Valparaiso. And 224 for Newman University of Wichita, Kansas. So the Newman Jets are on the board as far as match wins are concerned. Taking the first three games of this match with Valparaiso. And the ladies switch lanes and we'll move on to game four. Prokish, a little light, leaves a 2-8. And Smith up high, leaving a 7-pin. Spare for Riley Prokish, who has led off this Newman team throughout the third match here. Smith takes care of the seven. And there's another strike for Carrie Ann Takuchi. She's thrown several of those in this match. She's come up pretty big on this pair for Newman. Shufflevine, she'll have a 2-4-8 to tangle with. on the Valparaiso side. And Shufflevine takes care of that spare.
Eibel hits it half pocket, throws a bunch of stuff around the seven, can't get it to fall. And it's a 2-8 for Morgan Cooper. Fair for Eibel. Fourth match of the day will feature Lewis University. And since there is an odd number of teams in this event, they will have a bye. We'll have to see how exactly how that's handled. I'm looking off to the left where Quincy is uh, the team that should have a bye this game. And I believe they're the only ones bowling on 17 and 18 right now. But we'll see what happens. So Takuchi goes through the nose for a split in the Newman seventh. So one, three, six, nine for Morgan X. Seventh, so Valparaiso with 122 through six, spare in the seventh. And there's a strike for Addison Scheffelbein in the Newman eighth. They have 115 through seven with that strike up.
Ali Eibel follows up with a strike. As does Morgan Cooper. Start off the 10th, their third in a row. And double up to get them 2-0 with good count on the fill ball. And trips out the four to do just that. Newman puts in Allison Seswick uh, for that fill ball. Leaves him with 204 for that game. for Noel Duty. So another couple strikes, she can finish off with a 212. Eight count. She can cover that up to get to 202. And she does just that. Newman by a couple sticks in game four as we switch them up and get ready for the final game of this third match.
Briley Prokish with a strike. Carrying that four out on the high hit. Addison Scheffelbein high hit. Leaves her with a 7 9. She's a senior on this Newman team from Mulvane, Kansas. Hits a strike in the Valparaiso third. They're coming off a couple opens though, so 17 through two with, a, with that strike up. And Scheffelbein misses them both. So that'll bring up Morgan Cooper. Also a senior. From Gloucester Point, Virginia. She crosses over and gets the 10 to fall. up with another strike. duty hitting that strike encouraging her team to get going build off that and there's another strike from Prokish and Smith as well so
Gucci hits the fourth Newman strike in a row. And they've got 46 through the first three before that four bagger. Valparaiso with 45 of their own through four. And three consecutive strikes after that. The latest from Morgan Axe. strike from Addison Scheffelbein. <laughs> and the Valparaiso string comes to an end. They've got 104 through 6 with that strike up. And now a two pin for Allie Eibel. While Cooper will take on a 6 10 spare there. and stick around for our next match featuring Lewis University, our first look at, at that team. Uh, Lewis was not here for the first event, but making the trip here in 2023 as a part of this nine-team field. There's a strike for Kensley Morris. And she can double to put them up in the in the 230s with decent count. She leaves a 2 4 5 8. They will be in the 220s. And Newman will take this match with Valparaiso five games to none. And once we get some scores added up, we'll see where that puts them in terms of the greater field. So it's 222 for Newman as they take this third match over Valparaiso.
so it's 173 for Valparaiso as the two sides high five and get ready for their next pair. Have a, our next match in just a little bit here. It looks like Carroll and Illinois Wesleyan are still still early on in their game right now. Upper Iowa finishing off their match. be up in the high 220s this game. And Augustana and Lewis uh, still early in their game too. So we'll be back with our next match in just a bit.
So just a quick update with what's going on off to either side of us. Uh, I'm watching Carroll College, or University rather, finish up their game off to the left on lane 20. Um, and off to the other side. It looks like Lewis is finishing up their game over there too. So once everybody is all finished up with that third match everybody will switch to their next pair and we will get our first look at Lewis over here on our live stream pair 23 and 24 So as the ladies move around and get to their next pair, you know, if, uh, if you're watching and waiting and uh, need something to occupy like two milliseconds of your time, <laughs> you can always click in the logo on the lower right side of the page to subscribe. Uh, Bowling with the Feff primarily is a... Uh, a page where we do a live show every week uh, doing long-form interviews with uh, bowlers and those bowlers could be PBA members, PBA Hall of Famers, PWBA members and Hall of Famers. They could be top-ranked amateurs. They could be local league bowlers. Uh, it really runs the gamut. So um, if you're interested in bowling and storytelling, story sharing, this is a great place to be. Uh, if you uh, subscribe, doesn't cost you anything. You can set it up to receive notifications every time uh, we go live here on the channel or post a new video. Or you can leave the notifications off and uh, just check it out uh, at your leisure. It's a channel I've been maintaining for more than two years now. And in our back catalog, we've got more than 100 different episodes featuring bowling stories from really all over the country. We even did one with PWBA superstar Verity Crawley when uh, she was forced out of the country and had to stay in her hometown in England for a while and she was willing to do an interview uh, from across the pond. The most recent episode was this past Wednesday night with uh, Jim Cripps who some of you may know as the backwards bowler he recently shot the first USBC sanctioned 300 backwards. Um, and he's quite a character. He's uh, got a great personality, great story behind what he does, which is decidedly different than really what any of the, uh, what any of us other bowlers do it, or uh, at least how we do it. Um, so you can check that out anytime on the channel. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would sure appreciate your support and subscribing to the channel is the best way to support uh, what I do as far as bringing live bowling and uh, live bowling stories to you. So again, it's the logo in the lower right. Bowling with the Feff is what the channel is called and uh, I certainly appreciate you checking us out here today. So my list said that, uh, yeah, we were with just Lewis University on our pair right now, and uh, that looks like the way it's going to be. Carroll University was over here, but they appear to be on a different pair. 
We'll get started uh, with this fourth match in just a moment here. So as some of the teams get started with their matches, we're going to get underway here with Lewis University in just a, a moment here. Once we have a uh, updated scores, we'll let you know where everybody stands. Oh, speak of the devil. <laughs> One of the uh, gentlemen from the Upper Iowa men's team who was uh, helping out with things like scores and the like just handed me a sheet, so I'll try and pop that up on the screen for you as soon as I can get it moved over here. In the interim, I can tell you that Upper Iowa University is maintaining the lead as our tournament leader. See if we can fill in the rest of the blanks as we go. And 
as we get set for Lewis to start up here. Might be a little small to see. Maybe we can uh, oh. Maybe we can go at it like that <laughs> since nobody's bowling just yet. So Upper Iowa University uh, won all three matches. They are currently the top-seeded team right now. Total pinfall of 3,017 3, sticks. Newman University, who you just saw defeat Valparaiso in that last match, uh, our number two seed right now at 2,854. Lewis University, who's right here in front of us, a perfect 3-0 match record. They're at 2,640. From there, uh, you've got Augustana with uh, 2,558 pins in the fourth seed. Valparaiso in fifth at 25.32. Quincy in sixth at 25.20. Elmhurst in 7th at 2,410. Carroll University in 8th at 2,256. And Illinois Wesleyan in 9th at 1,927. So Lewis University from Romeoville, Illinois. Uh, you've got Allie Daig their leadoff player. Looking for a little help. I believe grabbing an accessory as she gets set to fire away at a three pin. Freshman from Manhattan, Illinois, makes quick work of that three pin for Lewis. As you get further along in the day, you get a few more people in the uh, in the crowd here. Catherine Svela take on the Newman second frame here. A little bit light, leaves the two pin. Both of these ladies are, are freshmen uh, that we've seen so far. And the reason that you don't see anybody on the opposite lane, lane 24, as we stand right now, is because we have a nine-team field uh, as Fela takes care of that two-pin. So this is technically a bye. So they bowl the five games. They just bowl them on a post. Allison Young coming in light, leaving a 2-5. And she's a junior who is from Romeoville, where Lewis is located. Covers that up. So it's three spares to start out for Lewis University.
Here's Dayalani Fishbeck, a junior from Lawton, Oklahoma. Coming up a little light for a 2 8 10. She was an all GLVC honorable mention last season. Uh, GLVC is the, com the conference, rather, that Lewis competes in. Also, Newman University, who you saw last match, and Upper Iowa. So these teams pretty familiar with one another. And she gets two of the three. Erica Lore of Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, which is just outside of Madison, will take on the fifth frame for Lewis. And crushes the pocket, takes down all ten. Kelsey Olson leaving a 10 pin. Olson is a senior with the Lewis program, but also uh, competed for Rock Valley Community College in Rockford, Illinois near her hometown. And she takes care of that 10 pin. I suppose in a situation like this where you don't have an opponent, you're not worried about wins and losses on the match play front. It's a pretty good opportunity to see what you've got in each player, see how they're adapting to the pattern. Svela coming up a little bit light, leaves a 5-7. And what kind of look each player has, how sure-handed they are on the spares. All the while, trying to keep pace with the leaders of this tournament since, uh, you know, as I mentioned, Lewis is right up there. Two 
out of the three. So 118 through 8 with Daylani Fish back up. Yeah. Takes all 10. for the Lewis 10th frame. Lewis competed at Sun Prairie High School uh, before her collegiate career started. And while she was there, in uh, her senior year there, her team won the Wisconsin State Championship, and she took fourth place individually in that state tournament. Takes down that spare. Striking the fill ball will give them 158. Again, you're watching match four out of the five bigger matches you'll see today here at the 2023 Peacock Classic in Waterloo, Iowa. Lewis University is bowling unopposed as we have an odd number of teams in the field, but uh, they are, you know, competing in a total pins situation. So really every stick counts. Uh, 154 in that first game of the five. over to lane 24 for their second game. Lewis is one of the teams in the field that was not here for the inaugural event last year but is making their Peacock Classic debut here at the 2023 event. Allie Dague goes up high, leaves a nine pin. Freshman out of Lincoln Way West High School takes down the nine pin.
strike for Catherine Svela. pin for Allison Young. takes down that four pin. Young posted an 86.4% spare percentage on single pins last year. So, pretty sure handed on those single pin spares as you just saw there. Back leaves a two eight. She knew that was left when she let it go, so it'll be 67 through four frames in this second game here. comes up a little bit light, leaves the two pin. it up. Pretty close there for Kelsey Olsen on that half pocket hit. Just couldn't take down the seven. takes it down on her second shot at it. So we are live on the 
first day of competition here at the 2023 Peacock Classic at Cadillac XBC in Waterloo, Iowa. You're watching our fourth of five Team Baker matches. This is Lewis University bowling unopposed just because we have an odd number of teams in the field. It's a nine-team field, Catherine Svela hitting her second strike of this game. A big thank you to our sponsors, the Cedar Valley Sports Commission, Brunswick and Upper Iowa University Bowling. And a big thank you to Upper Iowa for bringing me back to live stream this event for a second consecutive year. In our final match of this Friday at Peacock Classic, we'll get our first look at Carroll University, Waukesha, Wisconsin, taking on Elmhurst University of Elmhurst, Illinois. Pin spare for Fishbeck. And that'll bring up Erica Lore. Strike to give him 152 through nine. She can get him up in the 180s with a, another strike and decent count in the fill ball. up high and use a three pin. Probably can't see him from our vantage point just because I've got the camera pretty high, but uh, Scott Taylor down there um, advising his ladies. He's the one who really built the men's and women's bowling programs at Lewis University. <laughs> Spare's a spare, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
172 for that second game of this uh, fourth match. And we'll move on to game three here. a strike for Allie Daig. <laughs> now Catherine Svelo, who we saw strike twice in their last game. This time, half pocket hit doesn't get it done. Ten pin stands. it up. Tomorrow the teams will compete in a traditional game format and although the total pinfall is what decides who's in which position for bracket matches on Sunday tomorrow uh, those traditional games will determine who ends up on the all tournament team and who is crowned our all tournament MVP So Dealani Fishbeck leaves a six pin that she'll go after. So far the Flyers are clean through the first three frames of this game. And she takes down the six.
lore connect. So it'll certainly be interesting to see who uh, rises up, contends for those all-tournament team spots. <laughs> There's a strike from Kelsey Olson. As I mentioned before, last year's all-tournament MVP, Caitlin Cal Cavender, uh, was with Valparaiso. She's since moved on to Maryvale University. So we'll definitely have a new, a first time and new all tournament MVP. And I'm pretty sure Valparaiso had one or two others on the all tournament team last year. So, Catherine Svela gets a little to the left, but gets the friendly bounce and takes out that nine pin. To give Lewis 124 through the sixth and a spare up in the seventh. That one was left off her hand and results in a 5-10 split. So we'll see what she does with this. She gets one of the two. If you're following along uh, with what Lewis University is doing and will do in our final match today, it looks like they're also doing their own live streaming. So check out their social media platforms to find that live stream in uh, the fifth and final match today. fan of Lewis or just interested to see how they finish out the day's competition. Dale on a fish back a little bit high there. He's a four pin. that up. So it's 151 through 8 with a spare up in the ninth. And Erica Lore up in the tenth now.
trying out a different ball and having success as she flushes that first shot in the 10th for a strike to get him up to 171 through 9. That's a ball as well. So, good count here. She can get her team up around 200, 201. It's a third. So it's 201 for Lewis in game three. This is our fourth match of five that will be featuring today and that the ladies will compete in today. So far it's been the Upper Iowa University Peacocks hanging on to the lead during our entire event. They started out with 1079 in the first match and have not looked back. There are about 160 pins over second place Newman coming into this fourth match. So after these last couple games and after the other teams finish up with their five game matches, we'll tally up the scores and let you know once we find out what things look like after Baker match four. That one crossed over, left her a five pin.
There's Allison Young getting a nice break there to take down all 10. Always good to have that now and then. Fishback makes it two in a row. And some of these ladies, you can start seeing those little adjustments that are paying off for them, getting a little more familiar with how these lanes are playing. Right moves to make to get the ball through the pins a little cleaner and get the ball motion they've been looking for since the start. Shakes out the left side there and it's three in a row. That latest strike by Erica Lohr. and a As we said before, the campus is in Romeoville, Illinois, which is really a southeastern or southwestern suburb of Chicago, kind of in the area of Joliet and Naperville, Aurora. But it's always good to see more teams coming out and bowling in this event, especially ones like Lewis that are driving several hours to get here. of some of the programs nearby and hope that perhaps next year a few more of them come out. It's good to see uh, 
a little more than a month ago that Luther College in Decorah, Iowa, announced that they were adding men's and women's bowling. Named a head coach. And Decorah is a community that I drove through on my way here. Can't imagine it's much more than maybe an hour away, maybe less. So perhaps once they get that roster filled and get things up and running, maybe in future years we could see Luther joining the field in a, a future a future year of the NCAA Peacock Classic. We'll see. So 151 in the eighth with a strike up in the ninth. And Eric Allure leaves a two pin. Covers that up. And Coach Taylor will bring in another player to get a shot in on, on the fill ball. out rather nicely for Michelle Beza from Cicero, Illinois. So one more game to go in match four. The Flyers will jump back to lane 23 to finish things out. Or maybe not. <laughs> Picks three off the left. And we'll go after the spare. If you're watching us live right now, feel free to uh, utilize the live chat. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for. Maybe it's a player, maybe it's a team like Lewis University. Or if you're watching on replay, be sure and make a comment. Let us know what you think about the live stream and all that. Hopefully you're enjoying it.
it's certainly my pleasure to be a part of this event for a second consecutive year. As Catherine Svela shakes out the left side for a strike. High and leaves a 6'10 does Kelsey Olson. Takes them both down. Tough break, chopping that six off the 10. Gives them 56 through four. Strike from Lore. to make it a double. That's two strikes this game for Allison Young, who is now in the second and or no, I'm sorry. <laughs> My mistake. First and sixth. <laughs> Svela hits her second strike of the game.
four in a row for the Flyers. the two pin so 145 through seven Takes care of that pretty easily. Fishback was a two-time team state champion in high school and also the player of the year in her junior year back in Oklahoma. bit light, a 2-4-8 for Erica Lohr. And with a spare and some good count, she could push him over 200 one more time. all three. So they'll bring in a new player for the fill ball, and that's Savannah Jordan, a sophomore from Oswego, Illinois. Finish up with two oh one. So that'll do it for match four here at the twenty twenty three Peacock Classic. We'll let some of the other teams catch up. And once they do We'll start looking for some scores and updated standings. And let you know as soon as we have them in hand. And then get into our fifth match that features Carroll University of Waukesha, Wisconsin, and Elmhurst of Elmhurst, Illinois.
All right, so ladies are on the move. They will head to their final pair for today's competition. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. I should. So as we get set up here for our final match of today's competition, a quick reminder that we will be here streaming live for the remainder of the tournament. It's a three-day event. And if you are interested in finding out what happens as it happens during tomorrow's traditional games and then Sunday's bracket play. Uh, be sure and come on back. You can uh, use one of these, I hope, easy to remember links bit.ly slash 2023 Peacock Saturday for tomorrow's events and bit.ly slash 2023 Peacock Sunday for Sunday's events. The links are case sensitive, so be sure to capitalize the P in Peacock and the S in the day of the week. So now we'll get our first look at Carroll University of Waukesha, Wisconsin and Elmhurst University of Elmhurst, Illinois. So let's get things started with Hannah Bartlett from Aurora, Illinois.
Nice shot to start things out from Autumn Kalady, junior from Chicago. Alexandra Petruncio trying to take down the one three six. And doing it quite well. On the left, it's Kaylee Kavasik from Green Bay, Wisconsin. takes down the six pin. <laughs> Isabella Roten, the lefty for Elmhurst, also from Chicago. Leaving a 10 pin. And Emily Glossmeyer from McQuanago, Wisconsin. Leaves one to match. Scores coming around. Upper Iowa maintaining their lead on the field. Yeah! Newman University hanging on to second place. There's about a about a 70 pin gap between between the two. get an updated picture up there for you just as soon as I can here. So here are our updated scores. Upper Iowa hanging on to that lead by about 70 sticks at 3,877. They've gone three and one so far in uh, the four matches. Newman at 3,804, two and two on the day in match play. Lewis University at 3,559. After the 919, we just saw them shoot on our live stream pair, followed by the four seed Quincy at 3448, Valparaiso in the fifth spot, 3406, Augustana of Illinois 
in sixth at 33.78. Elmhurst, who you're watching right now on lane 24 at 31.80. Carroll University next to them on lane 23 right now at 29.60. And Illinois Wesleyan at 26.94. Callity makes quick work of the 10 pin. Kaylee Kovacic with a strike in the seventh frame for Carroll. And Alexandra Patrincio gets that ball to hang on to those last couple boards and take down the 10. Strike for Emily Wosmeyer. Nice strike from Isabella Roten. East Troy going to be looking at a four pin here in the Carroll nine. And Madeline Butler, the freshman from Joliet, going up high but leaving just a 10 pin. So in the 10th for Carroll is Lexi Seesmeyer from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. And she snaps out the seven for a strike. Still 204 up there if she can punch out. Tenth, we've got Lori Decker from Van Wert, Ohio. And 
takes down the 2 5. C. Smyer takes the count. Carroll will take game one. They finish up with 193. Right, Trying to even out their match record at Two and two for the day, which they would do with a win over Elmhurst. And they end up with 159 for that first game. So the ladies will switch lanes and head into game two. There's only so much I can really see from my vantage point, but I think Elmhurst has cornered the market on purple hair. Both uh, Autumn Callity, who you're seeing jump up for her uh, second shot of the first frame, and Coach Tori Bartolone. Got that purple hair today. Takes out that seven pin, ends up with a strike. Might be a little out of the vantage point, but kind of see Carroll's head coach, Courtney Ermish, and assistant Mason Petrin. They might sneak into the bottom right of your screen, but they're sitting down in the uh, settee area of their team. to chop that six off the 10. Carroll has 56 through three frames. Meanwhile, Elmhurst on back-to-back -back opens, hoping to start something up here. And there's a strike. Isabella Roten, a sophomore from Chicago. Sydney Rademan leaving a nine pin. Rademan is one of the Carroll team members I remember competing in last year's Peacock Classic. takes care of that nine pin. And 
Madeline Butler takes care of her spare. For Elmhurst, this is their first time in the tournament. And Seuss Meyer buries the pocket to give Carroll a strike in the fifth. 76 through four with that strike up. And a pretty healthy lead so far in game two over Elmhurst. There's 2-8 for Lori Decker. Bartlett, the one non-Wisconsinite in the Carroll lineup right now. Gets an eight count. Gives them 102 through six. Callity strikes. Elmhurst has 61 through five with a strike up in the sixth. As they try to build on it in the later stages of this game. So a 20-pin lead for Carroll going into the eighth frame. And Emily Glossmeyer, Glossemeyer gets a break and gets a strike in the eighth frame. at seven. And that strike from Radiman gives them a nice little foundation to work from heading into the 10th frame. Lexi Seesmeyer can double up and shut out Elmhurst in this, this game. And she may not even need a double. Now. But 
that doesn't help. So she's got the three, six, seven, nine, which is pretty tough by any stretch of the imagination. Get some count and get into the 160s. And that'll be enough. And she almost takes down all four, but they'll end up with 163, and that'll be enough to win game two. Lori Decker gets one of the two in that 210 split. They end up with 125 for that game. After we finish the fifth match, we'll try and have a word with perhaps a coach of our tournament leader going into day two of competition, which starts bright and early tomorrow. Hannah Bartlett with a half pocket 10. takes down the 10. So a spare up for Carol in the first. Now Autumn Callity responds with a strike.
there's another spare for Kaylee Kavasic. Spare for Alexander Petruncio. Isabella Roten stopping and starting over again. And that went left off her hand, but you know, if something distracted her, it's good to stop, put the ball down, take a deep breath, do it all over again. There's no clock on this thing. Keep that focus, get the concentration back, and Do your best to make a good shot. Almost takes down the spare. We'll have 44 through 3, and Carroll with 64 through 4. Here's Lexi Seesmeyer. Up high, can't quite trip out that six pin. Butler, and she'll try and take down the 44 through three frames for Elmhurst with a spare up in the fourth. Decker connects. Nice 
Nice break for the spare there for Hannah Bartlett. A spare for Kavasic. So Carroll hanging on to a lead of just a few pins here. Through the nose, leaves six, seven. And Petruncio with a spare there. So 90 through six, you got the spare up in the seventh. They've still got 200 out there if they can string together the last five. Meanwhile, Glossemeyer gets the count, so they have 121 through 8 and can punch out for 181. Seven. Now they'll need to punch out to get to 167. Carroll can strike out for 151. So there's still a chance for either of these teams to take this game. And Madeline Butler puts an X in the ninth. See Seesmeyer goes straight right off her hand and ends up with a one, two, four. So she can go spare strike for 158. Elmhurst still has 167 up there. Well, uh, Lori Decker left a three, six, Seven split. And that'll 
do it. So Carroll will take this game as well. And that will allow them to even their match play record for the day at two and two. As Elmhurst ends up with 135 for that game. So 157 for Carroll. You're watching our fifth and final match of the day here. Carol's going to take the match point from this one with Elmhurst. But again, total pins are kind of the name of the game right now. Everything from today and tomorrow gets added up, and we use that cumulative total to determine who is in which seed in the brackets on Sunday. Newman, the second seeded team uh, coming into this fifth match, is actually on a bye right now. So their match total, win loss total, will remain at three and one. I'm sorry, at two and two. Iowa, the tournament leader coming in, has a 3-1 and one record coming into this fifth and final match. They're taking on Augustana right now. A strike from Emily Glossemeyer.
So Sydney Rademan will take aim at a 5-7. She's a junior from East Troy, Wisconsin, which is southwest of Milwaukee. Gets one of the two. And that'll give them 51 through four. And Madeline Butler takes care of the spare. Strike for Bartlett. So 61 through five for Elmhurst. And Carroll working on a double with 51 through the fourth frame, make it three in a row. Brooklyn strike for four in a row for Carroll. So Rademan leaves a 3-10 baby split. That'll end their run of strikes. 139 through seven with that strike up in the eighth. She gets them both the hard way. So still a shot at 200 here if Seesmeyer can double in the 10. up a little light, leaves a 
little bit right, but still takes down that spare. Good count, she'll be up in the mid 190s. And Elmhurst hoping for a boost from Madeline Butler. Get back on track after a string of opens. So 196 for Carroll. Two out of the three, leaving them with 94 through nine. And Lori Decker to finish things up. Pocket leaves a ringing seven. So 103 for Elmhurst. They'll go into their final game of this last match of the day. Autumn Callity starting things out in game five. A little bit high, leaving a nine pin. Takes down the spare.
high for Alexandra Petruncio. And she'll go after a 4-9 split. it up. <laughs> That's a nice boost for her team. Momentum definitely goes both ways. I mean, you know, a couple of your teammates get fired up. Sometimes you can feed off that energy, string a bunch of strikes. Other times it's one throws a bad shot, then another, then another. But picking up a nice split like that, 4 9, that can definitely get the team pumped up. And Isabella Roten comes through with a strike there. Over, but the six won't go for Emily Glossemeyer. And three out for Madeline Butler leaves Elmhurst with 66 in the fourth. And Lori Decker coming up in the Elmhurst fifth. Once we finish things up here and get the scores tallied up, hopefully we can have a word with our tournament leaders and get you prepped for day two of competition. Which will be traditional games. And that's where we find out which of these ladies is going to get themselves into the all-tournament team, make a run at all-tournament MVP. And keep building up that total, total pins to uh, get their their seating for Championship Sunday.
So Elmhurst with 84 through six. Coming off back-to-back -back splits. Lexi Seesmeyer takes care of that spare to end a string of three straight opens for Carroll University. Petruncio. It's a flush strike in the Elmhurst seventh. They've got a shot at 200 if they can string some strikes here, hit the last six. Yeah. Hannah Bartlett, it's a strike in the Carroll sixth. A double for Carroll off the hand of Kaylee Kovacic. So a couple of opens in the Elmhurst 8th and 9th. Leaves them with 117 through 9. Lori Decker up in the 10th. Could hit to carry. So with 142 through nine and the count she's got in the 10th, Carol's gonna take all five of these. And they can get up into the 160s if she spares this and gets a good count to finish.
Decker punches out. Leaves them with 147 for that last game. And Seesmeyer takes care of the seven. A seven count is going to end the day of competition for Carroll University. With a 159. So Carroll takes all five games here and will even their match play record for the day. Two and two. Elmhurst will drop to 0 oh and 4. In the meantime, we are going to hang out here and figure out scores right after everybody else gets finished. There are still a, a few teams that are still going here, I believe, in their final game. And once we get scores together, we'll try and grab a coach from tournament leaders, get some reaction, and get you prepped for Saturday here at the 2023 Peacock Classic. We'll be back with that in just a moment.
All right, back we are here at uh, Cadillac XBC, the 2023 Peacock Classic. We've got Aubrey Kittle here, the uh, anchor player from upper, upper Iowa University. Congratulations on your performance today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet. Tell me about what happened out there, what you saw, ball reaction, that kind of stuff. Um, I think coming into it uh, with bowling on the pattern, we, we kind of had, had an idea on how it would play, but we never really, you never really know how it's going to play until the day of. Sure. Um, we tried a couple different bowling balls, the obsession, and then the collision, which ultimately was the ball for the entire day. Okay. Um, I think making sure we didn't really get this pack away was a huge key for us, making our spares, and understanding that as the day go by, uh, how fast transition might have hit, because ultimately it got whipped super tight down lane yeah. at the end of the day. Okay. Um, this is kind of a, a cool moment for you guys because it's your tournament, yet last year you hosted it but couldn't compete. Now you're here actually competing. You got off to a great start right off the bat. Um, how does it feel to kind of, you know, finally be in it, in the competition part of it? Um, I think it's amazing uh, because I transferred in here from Clark University, but this was probably the best decision I ever had. But it feels really special that not only we're leading a tournament, but it's our home tournament. Yeah. And finally coming together as a team and and everybody was in it from uh, the start. It, yeah. it felt amazing. Sure. Because through the good and the bad, no matter what, we were all there for each other. It's an interesting situation because you've got Coach DePaul who is the leader. Yeah. Yet she's got to run the tournament, so you've got Coach Landry in there. Tell me about that dynamic. How did it work for you guys? Um, I think it actually worked out really well. Um, we we were all there for Coach Landry, and we helped him out through the best that we can, but he ultimately was helping us through the entire thing. He helped us uh, stay on top of moves. He helped us uh, stay in our heads. Um, so, like, a few sets we did a not – not up to our standards, but we are still in it no matter what because mm -hmm. Coach Landry helped us through everything. Yeah. How did you uh, help each other? I mean, obviously, yeah. the girls, you know, the ladies who are striking, maybe some are not. They got to pick up the um, ones who aren't there. I think everybody pulled their own weight today. We all picked up spares, maybe had a few opens, but ultimately we all hit the puck and we all. Uh, filled our frames when needed to. Um, that's ulti ultimately what it comes down to, is filling your frames. Yeah. And today wasn't easy, but we all we all stayed positive. We all had each other's backs. We high-fived. We cheered. Uh, we ultimately had fun, because that's the main thing that we did. Yeah. You obviously had a great crowd here yeah. of support. Well, tell me what that means to you to have you know family and friends right um, here at the home center. It means a lot. Having our families here is a huge thing of support because mo some tournaments they're not able to come to, but our home tournament, having them be here, it's special. Um, knowing that we have each other's backs, but we also have that support system from our cheering section. Yeah, for sure. Well, we are going to get the final scores in just a moment here as soon as they're, d they're done tabulating things. Uh, Upper Iowa has been in the lead in this event really from game one and hasn't let up uh, and due in large part to your performance, yeah. Aubrey. So congratulations on, on the first day and best of luck uh, in the next two. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, for having me. you betcha. We'll be right back with those scores as soon as they become available.
right, back here one more time at the 2023 Peacock Classic. We're kind of jammed in a corner here because I want everybody to see the, the scores. I'm here with head coach Nicole DePaul, Upper Iowa University, and as you can see, 4-1 uh, and one match play record, yeah. 4,774 pins, a 60-pin lead over Newman for the moment. Of course, yeah. this is a three-day event, so a lot can happen between now and Sunday, but a fantastic start for you guys. Tell me about uh, about what you saw out there. I know you were kind of racing around. Back and forth. Yeah. Um, I'm host Since we're hosting the tournament, um, I'm helping out, running it, making sure everything goes smooth, and our assistant coach, Coach Landry's on the lanes with the ladies, and then I'll pop in as needed or go down to root them on, and uh, we started off phenomenally with that 1079. Yeah. It's a school record. Oh, wow. I, I, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a school record. And so seeing them do that against Newman, who is ranked in the poll, is fantastic. It was an awesome experience. It helped feed their energy throughout the entire day. And then we ended up shooting another uh, another set over a 1,000. Um, and as we progressed through the tournament, the pattern was getting more difficult, more difficult. They still held their own. And uh, we end up with day one leader. I yeah. think that's that's the first time we've ever done that too. So to have it here at our home tournament is awesome. Yeah, awesome. absolutely special, especially when given the circumstances, the way it played out last year. You host the tournament, you yeah. can't field a team. Yes. This year, you know, you wait a year and finally finally get them out here yeah. and give them an opportunity to compete at, at our own event is is something I dreamed of when we started this program. And we've always been the underdog in some capacity. So now we are up there with some of the best of the best teams and we are showing them how serious we are. Um, I hope this brings some more talented teams to our, our tournament next year. Yeah. Tell me about, um, you know, about these, these ladies that, you know, maybe the things that we don't see out there. I mean, we can hear that they're pretty loud yes. because yes. you have to be, you know, when you want to build momentum, you got to be loud, you got to cheer on your teammates. But what about their character? What, what do we need to know that maybe we can't see simply by watching them throw the ball down the line? Personality. We have on our team a variety of personalities from the class clown to the serious lady, the organized to the disorganized. And we as coaches have to tune into their personalities to get them successful on and off the lanes. And when we figure out what makes them tick, it's when they blossom. And that's what happened today throughout the entire day. And you don't get to see the, from the front of them. You see from behind. You're not able to see their emotion until after we're done. So I think, I think seeing their character from that is really important. Yeah. You had a nice little huddle with them after the fact. What did. What'd you tell them? I said this is the first time in school history in the four years of me being the head of the program we have led a tournament cool. and I have never been more proud of the group we have in front of us this is this is a highly talented team there's no reason why we cannot do what we did today on a constant basis and going into tomorrow um, we have a perspective of what to expect and to continue holding this lead so we can end up in the championship bracket right away. Yeah. What kind of what kind of things do they do now between now and tomorrow to kind of keep focus and all that stuff? Um, so tonight we have a lot of parents in town and the ladies are going to spend some time with their family, decompress, relax, enjoy. And then uh, we'll all get together tomorrow morning, come back out here and start it all over again. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks for the time. And thank you so much for bringing me back. Oh, it's been great to have you. This so is much awesome. Great compliments of having someone who understands the sport of bowling and, yeah. and your enthusiasm for what we do here. It really, really helps us out tremendously. So thank you for being here. Well, it's a great honor for me. I'm really glad I could make the trip. And, uh, you know, best of luck to you and your team on another uh, successful day at the 2023 Peacock Classic. Goal is to win our home tournament. There That's you go. Goal, so thank you. She's head coach Nicole DePaul. <laughs> I'm Andrew Pfeffer. Thanks everyone for watching both live and replay. We will see you again tomorrow.